Well, I'm back. You know what? This seems to be burning pretty good. I've had a few of them now. They seem to stay lit a little better. They're packed a little better. Of course, the, the band came off in the wrapper. So, we'll, we'll pull this out here. So I can get it out of the wrapper. And I will show you what they are. I'm trying to think where the hell I bought these from. Cigar International. I believe that's probably where I got them from. Or, if I didn't get them from Cigar International, I got them from Thompson Cigar. I think they're both out of Florida. I'm not sure. But anyways, e either Thompson Cigar or Cigar International. One or the other. But anyhow, it, it seems to be a decent cigar. You know, it seems to stay lit. It, it burns nice. You know, ash stays together. But here, if you can read that... I'm going to try to hold it steady. I don't know if you can read it. It might be backwards. I don't know. But but that's 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 the baby right there. Throw it over here in the ashtray. Making a pile on the desk here. But hey, my gosh. Has all as has all the preppers got on here and told you to be afraid. <laughs> The question it is haven't is when they haven't been on here tells you when to be afraid. That's interesting, isn't it? Let's see. I've read I've read some of the the I don't know if it's clickbait or what, but I've talked about it a long time ago, probably before most of you ever subscribed about having your mindset, and you had to set your mind properly for what's coming. I talked about it. Anyhow, people want to get you worked up and scared about these things, and I've talked about this before. You know, they they, they, they get in there and they have to get up here really close and then observe everything and then and, and dissect it and everything and, and all that. Well, I gotta get my fingers up. Gotta get it in there and dissect it and take it apart in little pieces and this and that stuff and but they forget the big picture. <laughs> and the big picture, well, God already told you it was going to happen. You don't have to get in there and dissect it. God already said, hey, it's coming. Watch. Listen. Watch. There would be some people, I, I put blinders on them and I deafen their ears. So you don't pay attention. And it comes to you in a thief in the night. Now some of you already know and you're waiting for me to come and, and, and I'm, I'm bless you for that. So just remember God loves you. There's no fear. There's nothing to be fearful of. God's with you. 24-7. Doesn't matter where you're at. He's with you. Doesn't matter if you're at work, driving down the road, taking a shower, out on a nature hike. It doesn't matter. He's with you. And he's watching over you. And your guardian, your angels, there, and they're all watching over you. They're taking care of you. Now, is your life going to be rosy and all that stuff? Well, some people. So I think some people, their their personalities are such and, and things where where they don't have any ill will in their heart. And, and they go around life and, and they're just joyful and happy and, and like a little child is. And, and, and they live pretty much a... a Good life, happy life, and that's what God says. Don't worry. You got problems, give them to me. That's what I'm here for. I'm not here for, but God's here for. I'll say that stuff, but you know, it's not me, all right. 
So he says, give me your troubles and I will, I will take care of it all. I will work it out. I will open and close doors. I'm working behind the scene for you. That's what God does. I've said that before. And I, and I, and I wholeheartedly truly believe it. If you do anything good in your life, <laughs> that's because it, it's God, okay? All glory goes to God. You know, people think, you know, and want to pat people on the back. Oh, good job. Did, you did this. It's like, well, the person's honest. You should say, no. I'm just a vessel. All glory goes to God. And that's the truth. God wants to be Christ-like. And when you do, I've talked about it before too, when you do, you're, you're, you're not you anymore. You know, when you get to the point in your life where you're not you anymore, and people thinking, what the hell is this lunatic talking about? Well, <laughs> this lunatic is talking about you, 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 you are... Your soul have have so giving of yourself of, of 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 what's left of your quote life. You've given it to God. You worship God. You worship His everything. God is everything to you. And when you do that, you, you you're not you anymore. You've actually transformed yourself into the body of Christ. It's like I don't I don't identify as yourself, as 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 whoever you were born as. You have transformed yourself. Say you're a new being. Is, think about it. You're not the same person you were when you were two or eight or 12 or 17, 22. You're not the same person. You keep changing and developing and, and, and growing, well, hopefully wiser. <laughs> Some of us I'm not so sure about, you know, but hopefully as your as your life progresses your understanding of the lord your worship of the lord everything becomes greater than you and you lose your identity with that what is greater than you You've transformed. And that's, and that's all of us. We all need to do that. But some people, most people, no, they're still very selfish. I mean, God talks about, Jesus talks about in the Bible about don't worry about what you're going to wear. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. You know, he talks about, you know, like the birds, you know, the birds don't sow any food, but, but, but he feeds them. You know, don't worry about what you're going to wear, your clothes, don't worry about it. God's got it. He's got your back. And I've talked about this before, too, because I, I, I actually had a lot of comments. Well, not necessarily on here, but I, people text me and, well, you know, uh, email me stuff and this and that and, 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 and tell me about, you know, it's like, you know, you're, you were right because, you know, I have family that's this way. You know, they were one way and then also they, they got a really good job or made a lot of money and now so, you know, it's like they don't need Christ. The only reason you got to where you're at, bub, 
is because of Christ. Oh, the devil got you there possibly too, but if you can't find God in your heart, what, like it says, what, what good does it do to conquer the world and lose your soul? There's a lot of stuff like that. And this is the thing that if you listen to a lot of these preppers and people out there, they don't want to talk about what God's already told you. What Daniel and Matthew and all these other, what they've already said, what they've told you. But they want you to buy their stuff. A lot of things happen in life. Even the best well made plans don't work out always. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. There's plenty out there that made plans and it's like, well, it didn't go the way I planned. <laughs> it didn't go the way I thought it was going to. You know? There's been plenty of times I've said that to people. I said, that didn't work out how you thought, huh? <laughs> I've said that to myself plenty of times too. And that's why I laugh about it, because it's funny. I mean, you, know, you make plans, you do this and that, and all of a sudden it's like, well, well, that certainly didn't go the way it was planned. So, yeah. Pretty interesting, ain't it? Maybe God didn't want me to walk down that path. Well, it's his path. I won't walk down it or I will, whichever way he chooses. I'll let him. Like I said, I don't hear voices. I do have imaginary friends that talk to me and, and you know, let me finish what I need to do here because, you know. But I have my imaginary friends. <laughs> I hope you don't believe me. I mean, there are probably some people out there that would just, you know, take that clip and go, look, the guy's crazy. He's got imaginary friends. It's like, well, no, I don't. I don't know. I just, you know. But anyways, folks, all I'm getting at is, is don't let these, these fear mongers get you down. Live a good life. Live a righteous life. Don't let your heart be burned down with crap. I mean, Jesus said, now I'm going to botch it. And I'm going to have to like paraphrase, but I'm going to botch it. Like something about what, what does worrying you, does, does, does it, uh, does it add a cubit to your stature or something like that? I, I can't remember. It's, I get stuff running around my head like that, and I, I mess it up. But basically, you know, he's saying, what's worrying getting you? Does it add anything to your life? Does it, it, it? No, it takes away from your life. So don't worry about things. Give it to me. God, not me. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to help you, man. It was funny, I remember years ago, we used to do small squares put up at the haymow. And I could, I've told some of the other guys, I said, man, I said, if you, I said, I hope you're in good shape because if you're not and you have a heart attack, I said, you're going to die. You know that, don't you? I said, because I don't know CPR. <laughs> I said, I don't know any of that stuff. Said, you're going to be screwed, man. You're going to die. It's like, I don't know what to do for you. You know, I shouldn't laugh about it, but you know. It, it was meant to be funny, you know. I mean, yeah, I would dial 911, you know. But, you know, we would try. Put it that way. We would try. But, like I said, don't let these people, you know, con you into spending a bunch of money on stuff. There's a lot of people out there that they don't put God even in their life, let alone first in their life, 
And they're going to go out and they're going to buy all this stuff. And they're going to buy all this food. And they're going to buy all the, the, the ammunition and, and all, the, all the water. And they're going to have all this stuff, okay? I mean, they're, 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 I don't know, their house or wherever their bug out is, whatever, is, is, like, a, is like a damn uh, Walmart, you know, with a big grocery aisle and a big this aisle and a big that aisle. It's, it's just going to be crazy. And most of them die. Somebody will kill them. Something will happen. And most of them will never see it. They're actually prepping for someone else, but they don't realize that. They're hoping for the best, but a lot of people aren't going to make it through it. I may be one of those. Well, I'm not a prepper, okay? I'm not one of those. You know, I mean, like I've always said, it's prudent to have some extra food around and then, and then some extra water around and that's just normal i mean well i call it normal but you know i mean out, out in the country you know we get a bad snowstorm the the roads drift over and stuff you might be stuck here for a little while and that's okay i'm not gonna starve you know so i mean you know somebody comes here going all right he's got no i don't have <laughs> you're mistaken bob i ain't got what you think i got me they don't you know, so, no, I, I'm not a prepper. I try to be prudent about things and have some extra food, but, you know, whatever. But all I'm getting is, I, you know, I knew a guy. He lived, I don't know, 10 miles maybe from here. Yeah, maybe 10 miles from me. Had a good job the whole nine yards. Real, you know, good guy. And he had a he had a he had a, a pond and he had barn. He had you know tractors, trucks. Yeah, you know, he had all this stuff. Had had a little bit of land. And he had stockpiled. I mean, he could have lived out there on his own for years for what he had stockpiled. I shouldn't laugh. I mean, I do laugh. It is kind of funny to me. But, you know, where I'm going with this is poor guy ended up with cancer and ended up dying. Never got to use any of it. And then his, his, his estate, you know, wife, Ellie, they just came in and they just sold everything. Everything. Even the property. The whole nine yards. Because he bought the place just for that. And he was fixing it all up and doing everything and this and that. And, and it's like kind of a kind of a reminder that you can make all the plans, but it don't always work out. And he never got to use his props, even though he, he was ready. God had other plans for him. And may he rest in peace. Hope he's in heaven. Hope all you end up in heaven. But you might end up there and I won't. <laughs> but hey, that's okay. I mean, you know, I don't want to, but, uh, you know, things happen. I'm not the type that's going to stand there and argue with God. I already know. I already know how it goes. I'd just be like, well, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yep, I understand. All we can hope for is God has mercy in our wicked souls. So anyways, folks, I figured I'd get out here and I'd ramble a little bit about this nonsense that these people predict and they're prepping and they want to sell you something all the time and this and that stuff and even the best well-made plans don't always work out that's my point here something happens i've talked about this before and they don't want to trust in god they don't want to trust in their creator
You know, this world is more wicked right now at any time than more than any time in the history of the world. Worse than Noah's day. Moses, yeah, too. Sodom and Gomorrah. This world is more wicked than all that put together. And probably by a hundred, maybe a thousand fold. That's how wicked this world is. At any time in history. So you don't think judgments are not coming? But they don't want to talk about that. They want to just go, oh, they're doing this, I'm going to analyze this, I'm going to analyze that. and Most of them, they're just parrots repeating from somebody else's whatever. Doesn't really matter, does it? What matters is your relationship with Christ. And accepting him as your savior. And asking for forgiveness. And, and forgiving others. So you don't run off that burden in your soul. God wants you to come to him as righteous as you come. And that's why Christ died on the cross for us. Because he knows for us, it's like an impossible task. So anyways, folks. Y'all take care. You keep, you keep praying for each other. Praying for those you don't know. That's what separates you from the rest. Because a lot of you deeply, deeply care about what happens. And and, and not just to, you know, your friends and, and your family and stuff, but, but, but a total stranger. I care. When bad things happen to people I don't even know, it's like, oh, you know, I, I think it's awful. I think it's terrible. It's, it's horrific. And some of the stuff that these, these illegals come in and do to Dude, a sweet little girl, I'm a young woman in college, and, you know, life's going to be great, and, and they end their life because there's some animal. God should be glad, well, put it this way, people should be glad I don't get hold of them. But what God does to them is going to be worse than what I can do to them. But man, I'd like to, <laughs> I'm just like every, any other man out there, well, even women, be very protective. And you should be. But vengeance is Lord's, he says. But we shouldn't let animals like that run free either. What do you do to a dog or a rabbit coyote, a rabid coyote or rabid raccoon or anything you destroy it you, you eliminate it so it doesn't do any more damage to anything else so it in, so it's in, doesn't infect anything else you destroy it well that's my feeling on that if animals running loose out there doing these things and it's a two-legged animal eliminate it destroy it get rid of its DNA out of the damn gene pool <coughs> I know I shouldn't say things like that but that just pisses me off you know one day that was someone's baby I don't care if you're if you're 80 years old and you got some animal out there you know trying to take advantage of some elderly people or, or trying to break into their house or, or rob them at their, of their car or just anything. Even though they're 80 years old, at one time in their life, they were somebody's infant. They were somebody's baby. And that parent or parents invested 
love and time and, and, and manners. Everything invested themselves into this. For some animal to attack. For some animal to destroy. For some animal to harm. Really? I believe that's why God put people like, well, men like myself or people like myself on this planet. Because I'll tell you what, let me loose. Those son of bitches won't be here. It'd be like the Old West. One of dead or alive and eh, be dead. Because I ain't got no prison. I got nowhere to put them. But I ain't wouldn't tolerate that shit for two seconds. Now, it just sickens the hell out of me that these... You got animals like that running around out there. And you got how many hundreds of millions of people in this country? Hundreds of millions. And there's probably hundreds of millions that feel the same way I do about it. And it's still happening? When you got that many people and this shit's still going on, there's a problem. There's a disconnect here. Might have to slap the shit out of a few people and make them see the light. It's easier to pray to God and hopefully God will take care of it. I really don't have to like to get down dirty and get my... <laughs> contaminate my soul and my mind and everything else because a few people won't do their damn job. They would just go do their job. Seems funny, man, when those cops got the shit kicked out of them. Boy, they had those Mexicans. Man, they had them perps. Boy, they had them right now. If that would happen to you, eh, we'll work on it. They never would have found them. But if it happened to their own, oh, man, we nailed them and we got them right away. People, oh, you're a vigilante. Nope. What'd they do to horse thieves? That was perfectly legal. Well, you can hang a horse thief. Another thing pissed me off was slavery. That, 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 that pisses me off to no end. A slave, a free man or woman. I mean, they everyone, everyone. No one should be a slave, period. There should not be that. that is, that's repugnant to me. And, and for them to want to run away, yeah, they should. And for what they get, and if they got caught, the things they did to them is repugnant to me. A lot of those people wouldn't have liked me either. I'm not talking about the slaves, I'm talking about the owners. They wouldn't have liked me either. This country was formed to help the downtrodden. To help those people that have no hope. And it doesn't necessarily mean they have to come here like they're doing across the border because they have no hope in their country. What that means is our leadership, and we have, don't have any, we have a total lack of, should be down in the southern border countries working out deals moving factories, building factories, the whole nine yards, you know, bringing this in, giving these people good jobs, hope for the future. They don't want to leave their home country. They'd rather stay right where they're at. That's where they're born. That's their home. Now, if you need help getting this cartel or these low-life pieces of crap or gangs off the, the, the streets and, and, and quit killing people and, and doing this stuff, by God, you just let me know. I'll take it to the American people. You know what the American people will say? Well, it, I, I know what the military guys would say. Most of them would say, hell yeah. Let's go kill them sons of bitches and straighten this mess up. Because that's the military's job. 
to protect, to protect the downtrodden. That's what, that's what the military does, protect. And yeah, if these if these presidents or minister or whoever they call that get elected would say, yeah, I don't have the manpower to do this. I mean, everything's so corrupt down here. I, I, I just can't get this taken care of. And I'm sure the president gets on TV and says, listen, you know, we got some problems. Uh, I don't know how you folks feel about it, but this is what I plan on doing. You can call if you don't like it. You can call if you do like it. I'd be talking to my generals, and I'd be talking to Congress, and we'd work something out, and uh, hopefully be all on the same page and say, you know what, it's cheaper to go down there, eliminate this animals down there, and and take their lives down there and build them up, not give them a handout, millions and billions of dollars, but say, here, here's some factories, here's here's. Here's some businesses. Here's this that want to come down and 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 raise your standard of living. I mean, health care. You know, the whole nine yards, just like we got here. You know, running water, plumbing. You know, everybody's got a, you know, a, you know, a chicken in the pot. You know, a, you know, roof over their head, running water, indoor plumbing. The whole nine yards. That's a whole lot cheaper to go down there and do that and help them and, 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 and give them a hand up instead of a hand out. It's a whole lot cheaper. And, I've, and I believe the American people would be behind it 100%. I know I would be. Because I don't like, I, I don't like bullies. I don't like bullies one bit. I don't like tyrants either. Let live and let live, you know, let be, you know, one man don't have the right to tell another man how to live. God, on the other hand, has the right to anything because he's the creator. And if you'd follow God's laws, we wouldn't have none of this would be going on in the world. We should be a beacon. That's what we should be. A righteous beacon for everyone in the world to excel to be. But no, we have fallen so far. Can it be fixed? God could fix it. Maybe that's kind of how it's looking, isn't it? But I guess, you know what? I trust God. He'll, if he wants to fix it, he fix it any way he wants it. I'll put my faith in him. But if he says to someone in power, you know what the right thing to do is. Better listen. He's going to hold you accountable. You're screwing everybody over for the money or some power. Man, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to be around you on Judgment Day. I want to watch. I'm kind of sick like that. I'd like to watch what happens to you. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, I wouldn't want to stand too close to you in case that lightning bolt gets me. <laughs> it might. <laughs> it might. So anyhow... This ran way too long. So you folks take care. You know I'm always rooting for you. I'm rooting for everybody around this world. Just want to live in peace. Live in fellowship. Man, wouldn't that be nice? Don't have to worry about locking your doors. Don't have to worry about anything. Any Everybody's, you know, above reproach. Because they, they're godly people. 
and you could trust them. Wouldn't that be something? Well, God's going to take care of all that. And I trust him. So, y'all take care.